Yeah, welcome everybody and thank you for joining us. This morning, um, I want to talk about uh, managing expectations and particularly, I mean, within the plumbing trade, but of, but of course, this, this, this is a, a universal sort of a subject and a universal thing that, that we should do. Uh, well, I, I certainly found it to help me in, in my career. And this guy is an American footballer. Not that I follow it, but his name is Terrell Owens. I thought I'd just put this in there. He says, if you align expectations with reality, I beg your pardon. Uh, if, if you align expectations with reality, you will never be disappointed. And that's quite a profound statement right there. Because if, uh, if you think about where, where your disappointments come, and not only yours, but the clients, in terms of uh, what's delivered versus what was promised, um, if the expectations of the clients were aligned with reality to, to begin with, then, then there's no such thing as disappointment. So that's, that's, that's to me key. And um, it's often a very difficult thing to do. So let's just go through what I, what I want to sort of unpack this morning. So why should we manage expectations? And as I've said, if you have to if you deliver, if you if you give an expectation which exceeds the expected or or, or 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 deliverable outcome, then the gap that that is left between the expectation and the outcome is a disappointment. That's that's the that's the bottom line. So whatever you cannot um, deliver on on the expectations, whatever the shortfall is on expectations, becomes a disappointment. And of course, we all know that. A disappointment or any other negative that a client or anybody else can latch onto will become tenfold in, in its impact in the relationship. So clients often experience or expect more than they can realistically uh, be, uh, re uh, be expected to be delivered. You know, in other words, they, they think that everything's going to run perfectly smooth on site, that um, we're all going to be uh, you know, they, they, there's not going to be any kind of hiccups, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So they've got this perfect image in their mind, and very often the reality is a little bit different. They might have been fed incorrect information from wherever, from whichever source. And what do I mean by that? For example, if somebody says to them, "Look, uh, I had a, you know, round of bri fire. I had a, a bri put it a, <laughs> a, a, a solar system put in." Uh, um, last week and i want to tell you this thing i don't even use any electricity it's it's fantastic and the client now expects that uh, that that this thing will will not be will not use any electricity whatsoever that's that's not realistic that's just bright bright fire talk and so um yeah that that sort of thing so they might have been fed incorrect information and if you can't deliver to what their expectations are you will be seen to be underperforming. In other words, they're going to look at you and say, man, this guy's not delivering what he said he was, what, what I thought he should be delivering. And so he's underperforming. And that, be, that is a source of friction. So <clears throat> as soon as there is a perception that you are not delivering what you, uh, or what he or she believes you should be delivering, immediately there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a friction. And if there's a misalignment of, of expectations between yourself and their self, it becomes an issue. So uh, how, how does she expect me to do that? I mean, you're on site, you're a plumber, you, kn you know what's possible, what's reasonably possible, and they are asking you to do something which is completely unreasonable and not usually how things are done. But she completely expects you that as a matter of course. And so now you start to misalign and you say, that's not what we usually do. This isn't how it's it's done. This is This is not what the system is designed to do whatever the case may be so it creates a he said she said situation and and nobody ever wins that there's no such thing as an, as a as a as a um a positive positive outcome you know positive for him and positive for me outcome from a he said she said situation unless you are very good at trying to explain what what actually went wrong and where the expectations uh, became misaligned so i feel that at the beginning of a relationship, uh, whether it's, you know, whatever relationship, but we're talking specifically client relationships, at the beginning is the time to manage those things. And by, in no doubt in my mind, it makes for a better relationship, realistic expectations right from the get-go. 
um, makes for a better relationship overall. So there's some examples in plumbing. Now, of course, the, guys, there are hundreds of examples. I mean, we can all talk about expectations. Anything, we, every single thing we do in our lives, we've got a certain level of expectation. And every interaction we have with other human beings, we've got certain levels of expectation. So please, this is just a, a very basic summary. So, but if you are having to utilize existing services, so you let's say you're doing a bathroom innovation and you're having to hook up to existing waste um, as well as existing, existing water supply situations. And if you don't, properly have a look at those things and say, you know what, ma'am, um, th this, this stack doesn't seem to be properly vented or whatever, or it's, it's undersized, you could have flow rate problems, or uh, ma'am, you know, if I cut into this pipe, it's very old and it might start to leak, or it, there might be a lot of debris in the pipe which comes through, and or there might be smells in some. So if you are having to do something like that, it's not anything that you can prevent, but what you can do is prevent the perfect expectations of the situation. What about performance expectations? You know, as I said earlier, if you've got a heat pump system that you're uh, going to install or a solar system, um, what do they expect of the system? How do they envisage the system or the, or the installation that you're busy with? How do they envisage it um, working or functioning? What do they think it can do? Does that align with reality? Do they expect a, a 40 liter per minute thunder shower um, from, a, from an existing you know, uh, installation that only gives 15 liters a minute, et cetera? So you can, you can manage those expectations right from the get-go. And, and I found a very, very good way of, of, of recognizing what the expectations are is simply to ask. So you just ask the question. So you want me to put the shower in here or you want me to do this bathroom or this whatever it is. Tell me what your outcome is. Tell me what your, uh, your ideal sort of um, uh, scenario is with regards to, uh, to the system. What, 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 give, me, give, me, give me examples of exactly how you see yourself using this. What do you expect it to do when you do that? What do you expect it to do when you do this? What do you expect it to do when it's an overcast day or an overcast three days? What do you expect the solar system to do? Do you expect the heat pump to be invisible? Uh, what, have you seen a heat pump before? Do you, have you heard a heat pump before? Um, do you know that a uh, solar system is quite a heavy thing and you might have to have your, your roof strengthened? Ask those questions. And then what, then you start to find out what they start, what they are expecting from you or from the system. And if those don't align, then you can bring it back and you can say, well, actually, you, you know, you might've been misinformed or whatever the case may be. Another thing is timeframes and schedules. You know, <clears throat> what are the expectations with regards to time frame of the of the project um, or, or the particular job? I mean, if they want it done in three hours and it needs two days, well, you need to align those expectations and schedules as well. The obvious one is costs. And this, I think, is the biggest one, even though it's one that's a small little word there at the bottom. But I think that's the biggest one. You know, I, I remember a situation where uh, about two years ago, I think I was called to have a look at, and it was it was people that had just bought a property close to where I stay, and they um, wanted me to just uh, check their solar system because they didn't they were they were suspicious that it wasn't performing uh, because the you know the electricity bill was yeah it didn't reflect they didn't think it was performing so they thought oh, there might be a block pump or a, something that wasn't working so like so I, I i arrive there and i get into the ceiling and i have a look at this lot and um i don't know five ten minutes later uh, i came back down and i said uh ma'am uh, you know I, I i'm i must just tell you that for me to rectify this Giza installation, the solar installation. Uh, we, uh, if if I'm to do it properly, we're looking at between twenty and twenty-five grand. This is where this is where we are. This this is what I'm seeing in the in the five or ten minutes that I've been up in the roof. I haven't looked at every single detail, but I can tell you that that is the level that we are at. 
Um, I know you expected this to be a 600 Rand call out uh, and, and problem solved, but unfortunately I'm telling you that it's not, it's a 25,000 Rand call out in, for, in order for us to, to solve this problem. And the reason I'm telling you this now it be, is because I want you to know, or want, I want you to make a decision as to whether or not you want to go forward with this. So if, if you are willing to trust me and go forward and move forward with this, then I can go in depth and explain to you exactly what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and what differences it'll make. But if not, if you're not in that ballpark and if you're not willing to go down that road, then, then, then we call it a day. Pay my call out and, we, and we're done. And unfortunately, there's nothing I can do for you because there's, not, there's no details that I can go and tweak on this thing to make it anywhere near to compliant or, or anything. And it turned out, you know, and she said, okay, well, fine. Let's, um, let's go down that road. And we did, and we, it was fixed, and, and it was all fine. But I managed that expectation of hers right from the get-go. It was never, it was never, yeah, no, sure, I'll come in and we'll, cost, it'll do a, cost you a few grand, and yeah, and then we'll sort it out. No, I would, that to me is, money and time wasted so i i gave them the hammer blow right at the beginning and they were shocked but they they listened to me and they heard me and that was that so to me that is managing expectations sorry let me just do that um jacques if there are any if there are any questions along the way you know most i don't really mind about i don't mind being interrupted okay so you can feel free to stop me and and so on if there's hands raised or whatever and then lastly, well, my last example is, is capacity. What is my capacity? What am I able to deliver? The client thinks I've got like 10 teams that can come to site and, and do an entire house in a week. Well, I, just, I simply can't. Or maybe you can, or whatever the case may be. But, but so that, that ties in with timeframes and schedules and things like that. So um, if, if, you, if you, in any one of these scenarios, if you start to... Uh, allow the client to believe that, that something's going to happen, which, which actually will not happen, um, it becomes a problem. Okay, so let's get into how to manage expectations. And again, guys, this is not, you know, we're talking about hundreds of, of possibilities. I mean, every single situation is its own thing. But these are my kind of key points, okay? Be clear on your boundaries and on your abilities and on your capacities, etc. Be clear as to what you are willing to deliver how you can deliver it, what is possible, what's not possible, etc. Be clear on that. It's nothing, it's, it's easy to manage when, when you haven't started yet. It's easy to manage. You say to them, when do you think this is going to be, uh, uh, when would you like this completed by? Uh, next week. Next week, Tuesday. Uh, then you just, no ways, man. No, not a chance. No, no. Then, then, I, then you must find somebody else because I simply can't. Oh, okay, when do you want to? When can you do it? Well, I can do it in two weeks' time. You know, I, it'll take me two weeks. Oh no, that's a bit long. What about ten days? Okay, cool. So be prepared to negotiate, but be clear as to what you are capable of doing and what your boundaries are, etc. At the same time as you managing their expectations, you also have a certain set of expectations from the client, don't you? They must pay you money. They, you're not, they're not doing you a favor um, by giving you the work. That's not a favor. <laughs> it's a swap. It's, it's you've, so, you've got something I need and I've got something you need. So we're swapping. It's a, it's, we, we come out even Stephen at the end of the day. So in as much as you expect me to perform on site, that's how I expect you to perform when it comes to paying me because that's the deal. I'm swapping with you. I'm not, you're not doing me a favor. Yes, I need the work. I want the work. But I mean, you need to commit just as you expect me to commit. So when are you going to pay me? Let's have a clear understanding about that. And then be clear on the installation's deliverables or your deliverables. And I've touched on this before. You know, if they expect a, something to deliver, um, hot water free of charge completely. It's just not realistic. Or if they have seen uh, what they think is a heat pump and it actually turns out to be a, a whatever, a little thing, you know, the size of a laptop. It's not a heat pump, man. No, I'm sorry, a heat pump looks a 
like a big old air conditioner and it's quite an ugly thing and you know you need to put up with a bit of noise and dripping and all kinds of things so so don't don't paint a rosy picture and say to them no 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 it's fine it's it's a wonderful thing yeah you get what i'm saying i i i'm a i'm the biggest fan of heat pumps and solar so i'm just using examples but what i'm saying is don't say to them you know, uh, you, you won't hear it, you won't see it, and it's not going to uh, even, you won't even know it's there, because that's simply not true. Um, you will know it's there, you will hear it, and you will for sure see it. Uh, again, and I touched on the, you know, if you're using sewage or whatever, be clear on what you are able to deliver, um, because that then sets the boundaries. And then, of course, you're allowed to call a timeout. If you find yourself under a little bit of pressure, um, whereby you're expected to to, to, to say yes or, or, or make a decision on the spot, give yourself a timeout and say, hang on, can I just have a think about this and get back to you? Um, because I, I haven't had time to think this through yet. And, and, and we, can, we can pick it up you know, tomorrow or, or in, in a few hours time or whatever the case may be. Give yourself a timeout. Don't put yourself under pressure to have to uh, deliver right then. I, I often say to people, it's one of my... One of my go-to, and it's true for me, from from my my brain doesn't work so like a at a at a high speed. I have to I have to switch it on like an old diesel. So when when I start when I'm introduced to a new sort of concept and I have to now apply my brain to that, I, it's like an old diesel. You have to you have to warm it up. So just give me some time. I haven't really thought it through, and I'll get back to you in a minute or in an hour or whatever the case would be. And then I then I've bought myself some time because it's the right thing to do then I can think it through correctly and I can respond correctly. Um, and then under promise to over deliver. And this is actually very difficult to do. I found, well, it is difficult because what you effectively trying to do on site or to the client is to say to them, no, this is not right. Or this is not what you can expect. Um, uh, we, 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 we're not going to be able to do that. So you, you, you feeding them disappointments in the beginning. And it's difficult because, I mean, the oak's going to turn around and say, if you can't do it, well, then I'm going to get somebody else to do it. So you've got to find that balance. But um, I, I find if you under promise and over deliver, uh, it just, it's, it's a, it's a massive, uh, it's a massive uh, advantage. If you are able to do that, it's a massive advantage. And then learn to say no. Ask yourself a couple of these questions. I'm going to just um, click, click through them. So are you guilty of saying yes to someone when you really mean to say no? We've all done it. If you're honest with yourself, you'll say, yes, I am guilty of that because I'm sure we've all done it. And in a situation, in a business negotiation situation, it, it, it becomes damaging and you become the subservient partner in that relationship. So, or do you find yourself wondering just how you allowed yourself to be roped into doing something and now you feel angry and resentful as a result? I'll stick up my hand and say, yes, absolutely. I've done that as well. Are you a people pleaser? More inclined to go along with what other people want rather than asking for what you want. Again, it's a mistake we all made. And uh, I think continue to make. You know, we want to please the clients. We, we don't want to scare them away. And that's, I think, the biggest fear is to we worried about scaring them away before the job's even begun. But I found... Over the years, and as I say, I've never been a really successful uh, businessman, but I've found over the years that uh, 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 the best way to build um, relationships is to is honesty. You just you're just completely honest with them upfront. This is what I can do, what I can't do, what you can expect, what you can't expect, and that's it. And then you can also say no without really saying no. You know, you don't have to go in there and say, no, no, I won't, I won't do that because that's a little bit off-putting. But you can say, well, currently I'm working on this thing or that thing, which I've got to finish by next week, Wednesday. And if I can look at your story after that, is that okay? So you haven't said, yes, I'll deliver, but, you've, but, you, haven't, but you haven't said no outright either. Uh, so things like that, you know, you, you, can, um, you can manage the way in which you communicate to, to clients. And then to end off, I don't know how many of you know Dilbert, but there's a little there's a little cartoon so that that quite nicely describes the, uh, uh, the managing expectations in a quite a humorous fashion. Okay, that's it from me. Thank you very much.